Hello everyone, welcome to Chess Visor, your wise choice to improve your chess. In today's video, I am going to show you another game from Chess.com's uh, Global Championship Knockout Day 3. It was played between Arjun Erigesi and David Paravian. So before we check this game, if you are watching this channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the future videos. So here Arjun was handling the white pieces, so he opens the game with 1d4. We have knight f6, bishop f4, g6. We have uh, Indian defense on board, knight c3, uh, d5, e3, bishop g7. We have h4 uh, trying to do the earlier kingside attack, but it's been stopped by h5. Knight f3, we have castles by David, and we have knight e5 centralizing the knight by Arjun. And here he immediately attacks the center with the move c5. And after queen to d2, so it is good to have this uh, pressure in the center, but he immediately leaves the tension with the c takes d4. But after e takes d4, we have knight c6 developing move and also hitting the uh, e5 uh, knight. We have f3. After bishop f5, we have uh, bishop b5. Uh, before uh, developing this bishop, if you are wondering about capturing this knight, and uh, yeah, you can do that, but after d takes e5, knight d7, queen d4, queen b6. Queen takes queen, knight takes b6, and after queen set castling, white is slightly still better. So going back in this position, instead of that, he, he plays bishop f5, developing a piece. That's good actually. Bishop to b5, pressurizing c6 knight, and now the knight is captured. So knight takes e5, d takes e5, and now uh, knight to d7. And now the pawn is being attacked twice, but uh, uh, Arjun here completely ignores that idea and uh, uh, castles on the queen side. In this position, if you are thinking about capturing this uh, knight, and after takes takes you you may think about um, having this pawn on the uh, e5 square but it is not going to be uh, that helpful and even you can capture here also but uh, i don't think so because uh, black has the bishop pair and you will be having some uh, fun with the bishop pair and he has more open lines to work with and your king is still in the center right so that's why he didn't go down the uh, go down that line so here rather he simply castles on the queen side so we have knight takes e5 rook h e1 knight c6 and after bishop h6, he tries to uh, trade the important bishop for the uh, black scamp. So bishop takes h6, queen takes h6. And now we have e6 by Paravian. And now comes g4. I like this move. Even though it is going to be uh, like uh, white is going to lose a pawn here. But the thing is I want to open the h5. The point is if you capture with the pawn, uh, that's what actually happened in the game. And now we, I can push the pawn to h5. And now I'm threatening to open the h5 and the rook goes to h1 and... Uh, yeah, it's mate, right? So here uh, he plays queen f6, trying to bring the queen into the defense. f takes g4, and now we have bishop takes g4. And in this position, our, um, Arjun Erigesi completely ignores the the threat by the bishop, and he plays the move rook g1. In case if you are uh, so greedy, uh, you, you cannot actually capture here. If you are greedy, and uh, you, you can uh, simply lose the game immediately. After h takes g6, the mate is threatened now. So you have two options to defend. I think better is to uh, put the queen on g, uh, excuse me, h8. And after this, we can simply put the uh, queen on f4 and threatening to give some discovery. So after, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a last position. If you play moves like uh, f5, then I'm going to fork you like this. This one particular uh, tactic by the pawn push to the g7, the fork, it will be repeated in multiple variations as you are going to see. So going back in this position, if you play queen g7 uh, instead of queen h8, then the same story can happen like uh, uh, g takes f7 check and uh, yeah, you are lost again. So you are going to capture with the uh, rook, right? So after that, we can capture the queen and then rook takes g7. And now we can uh, capture all the pawns with the checks and or you can immediately capture the bishop. So going back in the game, it does it didn't uh, go down this line. Uh, rather, they played um, or uh, Paravian played knight to e5, bringing the knight into the defense. And we have rook d e1, threatening to capture the uh, knight here. So we have uh, bishop f5, queen to f4, knight c6, going back, bishop to d3, queen to d4. And now uh, it is not actually a wise choice to uh, you know trade the queen here. So in here. He simply drops the queen to g3 to avoid the queen trade. Bishop takes d3. After c takes d3, he plays knight b4. And now black has some kind of counter-attacking idea. But the problem is uh, still we have this pressure of, uh, you know, h takes g6 and also the opening up h file as well as the g file. 
so it is uh, still white is the one who is clearly better but here interestingly arjun plays the mooking to d2 to defend this uh, d3 pawn uh, very you know brave move here after this king to d2 uh, actually black played here the move uh, king g7 actually that is the last blunder of the game i should say uh, instead of that he could have tried queen f6 uh, this line would uh, you know simplify the position to go into an ending where white will have an extra pawn i'll going i'm going to show you that variation so h takes g6 we have f takes g6 queen traded uh, then rook takes g6 uh, king f7 then we can take on uh, e6 after uh, forcing the exchange of both the rooks in the ending after a3 you have to drop the knight and then you are going to lose a one pawn here i think it is a holdable at this level but still white has chance to win the game but in the game uh, going back uh, instead of queen f6 trying for some defending idea he played a king to g7 uh, i think this is the blunder uh, because now white can simply take on g6 and after uh, he played this move f6 i don't know what's the point because it is going to lose the e6 pawn now uh, the defending idea could be like uh, maybe queen takes d3 to give up the piece and try to hold the position but in the game he played f5 but that allows uh, arjun to capture on e6 and after rook a c8 and we have here rook e7 check and that's it the game is over you cannot actually stop the mate here uh, uh, black has uh, uh, many choices like uh, king g8 rook f7 king h8 but in the game he played king to f6 that allows Arjun to checkmate him on uh, on board with Queen G5 check, and it's a mate. Going back, uh, actually, uh, either way, it is, he is going to lose the game. Could have tried other moves like to King to G8. Then we have uh, Queen H2 threatening mate. So Queen H8 stopping the mate, but then after takes stays, we have this beautiful uh, folk. So going back in this position again, if you black with the rook, then we are gonna simply capture the rook. Uh, with, with the discovery and after king f8 we can simply play rook d7 and uh, the mate is inevitable but because it is mate in two you can only do the forcing moves like queen takes d3 and then queen takes d3 followed by queen takes d3 then we have this rook g8 mate so that is unstoppable uh, but in the game he played king f6 and blended mate in one yeah so it, it's really uh, you know a great uh, game by arjun erigesi the first uh, game in their matchup and the second game was again won by Arjun Ergesi in an ending. And the third game was drawn. So in the matchup, Arjun Ergesi uh, win the whole match. So if you enjoy my commentary, please do like this video. If you are watching this channel for the first time, uh, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the future videos. As usual, this is Chess Visor, your wise choice to improve your chess.